Erev Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very interesting broadcast this evening from MintPressNews.com, kind of where our story starts off this afternoon. Exxon Mobil, the Koch brothers, that is, Israel pushing Washington to partition Iraq and Syria. The current, currently stateless Kurds sit astride the Iraqi-Syria border on land blessed cursed with oil other resources and geopolitical significance is it any wonder that mega corporations and their client states are looking to use kurds stoke conflict and exploit the situation uh, this is something that we actually reported to you ourselves not knowing for sure that there was already um a known fact of oil reserves in that particular region of the world. But it seemed very obvious to us that indeed, that yes, that the U.S. government was uh, using the Kurds in order to be able to partition at least Syria, not thinking about the fact that Iraq also played a big part in this. But uh, we did know that the, the, the side of Iraq was also a possibility of those lines of where a Kurdistan would kind of develop and of course the Kurds have always kind of been thrown under the bus to begin with but when it comes to using them with the intent of once again dividing the land for gain as uh, Enoch excuse me as Daniel brings out in chapter 11 there uh, we're again seeing the land being divided for gain now Exxon Mobil is one of the companies that are brought up in this uh, article here uh, I don't know if this is picture is for real. Do they really roll a flag that big down the side of the mountain, or is it more uh, uh, maybe photoshopped? I have no idea. But anyway, it says here Washington D.C. years before the U.S. illegally invaded and then occupied Iraq. Plans are circulating within the Pentagon to partition the country along sectarian lines with express purpose of following the U.S. and its regional allies to better control oil re uh, resources production and movement within the Middle East. Now here's, this is gonna get interesting, friends. Very interesting. Now we're seeing this here, article coming out here on mintpressnews.com, speaking clearly that the U.S. is using the Kurds to be able to create, well, in this case, a Kurdistan, sectarian lines dividing both Iraq and Syria up. This is one reason why the U.S. will not leave uh, this region of the world, this part of Syria, and at the same time as that's going along, we have the Jerusalem Post coming out with an article, Kurds hope Israel can nudge U.S. to support independence. Well, sure they're going to give you independence. Sure they're going to help you get that and gain that. Have no fear. They say that Israel has a strong lobby and the ear of the U.S. President Donald Trump and that they would be very happy if we could help, she said. Well, let me tell you how much of an ear they've got. Well, the Koch brothers there, they are one of the largest oil producing companies as well. Uh, and then of course you have Exxon Mobil. Don't forget Rex Tillerson right here. Good old Rex, the Secretary of State. Yeah, I know he sold, he divested his uh, stock holdings of $174 million in stocks. Uh, but he was the CEO of Exxon Mobil, and now he's the Secretary of State. It's not only just Rex Tillerson, though. You know, of course, as we can look at his, uh, this was one of the articles here back in the New York Times. Rex uh, Tillerson required to shed Exxon shares wants to defer the taxes. Well, that wasn't really the big issue there. I guess the big issue really is that the Vatican itself, they too, know a lot about Exxon Mobil and the shareholding, etc. In fact, two of their board members are multi-billion dollar shareholders of Exxon Mobil. And not only that, in this book right here, uh, the Shareholder Action Guide, Unleash Your Hidden Powers to Hold, the author writes right here, uh, I don't know exactly what page number this is on, let me see if we can find out here, just to get a page number, uh, don't see a page number in there. But anyway, it says right here, Meanwhile, the University of Dayton, led by trustee George Hanley, became the first Catholic institution to divest, foreshadowing what the Vatican would do a few months later in the spring of 2015, talking about Pope Francis' encyclical about climate change. And that divesting was done very secretively. So you would not know that one of these wonderful Catholic institutions were 
kind of dumping their shares in ExxonMobil. That was along also with Bill Gates and the Gates Foundation there and others as well that have done exactly the same thing. So here's the whole thing. The Kurds are going to be used to divide the land. Uh, and of course, we see this in biblical prophecy. Let's jump over and let's take a look real quick here. Let's go back to some biblical prophecy right here and uh, kind of look at these things here because I think it's very important that we really examine those things that are going on here in prophecy. And of course, Daniel can't help but think about Daniel chapter 11 here, uh, where they do divide the land for gain. I think that's getting on down to around, let's see, uh, where is that at? Isn't that around verse uh, 30, 39, I believe it is? But in this place shall I honor the God of strongholds and the God of whom his fathers knew not. Shall he honor with the gold and silver, with precious stones and costly things? And he shall deal with the strongest fortress with the help of a, of a foreign god. That's the Vatican. By the way, the stronghold, this, this happens to do with the British Empire. And that may be where we get the idea of the Melchizedek, the king of the north there. And shall increase glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide Adama, the earth, not Haaretz, the earth for gain, for a price. They're still dividing it up. This was back during World War I, but yet they're still dividing the land. And every time they do it, they do it for gain. But you know, as I shared with you guys the other day, and I don't think the Hebrew version here will bring this out for me the way I need to, but let's just quickly look and see Hosea chapter 13. Uh, this is when we get into the prophecy here. Um, where the prophet Hosea speeks about Ephraim, of course, that being both British and American empires, that uh, there was a trembling, exalted himself in Israel, but when he became guilty through Baal, he died. And now they sin more and more and have made them molten images of their silver according to their own understanding. Even idols, all of them, the work of craftsmanship said that they say, they, they sacrifice men, kiss calves, etc. This is where Ephraim goes into idolatry, leaves the very foundation of where Yeshua once uh, blessed them with the blessings when he, sent his ten, when he sent the 12 apostles to the lost house of Israel and took the gospel to them. And of course, many of them uh, didn't stay with that truth when they got it, and they ended up being maybe part of the development of uh, uh, the Roman religion that came down through the ages there. But then you get all the way down. When you, when you read down and you find out what's going to happen, he talks about their springs being dried up. I uh, forget exactly which verse that's in there, but he speaks about that. Um, let's just see. And I will give a king in mine anger and take him away in my wrath. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up. His sin is laid up in store. Uh, the throes of travailing woman shall come upon him. He is an unwise son, for it is a time he should not tarry in the place of the breaking forth of children. Shall I ransom them from the power of the, of the netherworld? Shall I redeem them from death? Hold thy plagues, O death, how thy destruction, O netherworld, repentance be hid from mine eyes, for thou be a fruitful among the reed plants. That's interesting. They're fruitful, yes, and America still is like the land of milk and honey almost with everything at their fingertips. But what does he say? An east wind shall come, the wind of the Lord coming up from the wilderness, and his spring shall become dry, and his fountain shall be dried up, and he shall spoil the treasure of all precious vessels. And that's exactly what's happening in America because everything that we have is drying up. Our oil fields have been drying up. And, and, and this can also be applied spiritually as well as far as the Spirit of God, the oil of uh, uh, of, of the Spirit of God being poured out, that's dried up as well. But what do they do? You go right into chapter 14. Samaria shall be her guilt, for he, she, for she hath rebelled against her God. They shall fall by the sword. Their infants shall be dashed in pieces. Their women and with, their, with, with child shall be ripped up. Return, O Israel, unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast stumbled in thine iniquity. Take with your words and return unto the Lord. Say you unto him, forgive all the iniquity and accept that which is good. So we will, so, so will we render for bullocks the offering of our lips. Now watch this. Verse 4, that may be different in King James Version. I think that's like verse 2 for you guys. Assure shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses. Neither will we call any more the work of our hands our gods. For in thee the fatherless findeth mercy. Assure, that's the Assyrians. They will not save you. So though you be dried up and though you everything you've had everything in the world, but yet you have rejected God. 
And do you really think that the Assyrians, or in this case here, the Kurdish Syrians, do you really think that they're going to save you if you take and partition the land based on sectarian lines? Do you really think it's going to help? You might have your big wigs and your billions of dollars and all these investments and divestments and everything else, but none of it's going to work. It will all fail. And I believe that's exactly where we're coming. Also, in other news as well, we have uh, the U.S. Army conducts Hellborn operation in eastern Syria, takes another ISIL commander away. This is being reported in the Russian language media as well. I come across this earlier today. On August 15, the Iranian state-linked FARS news agency has released a fresh report arguing that the U.S.-led coalition has conducted a, a hell, uh, hell, uh, hell, uh, uh, Hellborn operation rescuing a top ISIS commander from eastern Syria and his wife as well. According to the report here, is actually the chief financial officer for the ISIS organization, according to the claims there. Uh, they say the Fars News Agency is reporting this, but this is also being reported by Russian media as well, claiming that this has actually happened. Uh, of course, we do not know for sure whether or not this is actually the case or not. Two U.S. soldiers killed in artillery mishap in Iraq have been identified, according to the Stars and Stripe there. They were on the Iraqi side, about 60 kilometers from the Syrian border. There are conflicting reports about this. There have been other reports coming out that there were actually four services, four U.S. servicemen killed. Seven were wounded. Uh, in this case here, they put two U.S. soldiers were killed. Five were wounded. Uh, and I, I don't quite know why there is a conflicting report on that. Those that are reporting in the uh, Russian media say it was actually the case was four were killed. And they bring up the fact that the U.S. is only speaking about two U.S. servicemen that were killed in this uh, particular mishap. Now, another issue, too, is whether or not it was a mishap or it was a grad missile that targeted U.S. forces. And that's something that, as well, the Russian media was speaking about as well. So I can't say for sure one way or the other. Still, it is a tragic loss of life for the U.S. military there. Uh, over in Iraq near the Syrian border. Very troubling indeed. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We do have the new internet up and going there. Uh, I will be going to take care of the debate on the uh, global versus flat earth. We'll be getting that up. Uh, I did load already uh, Dr. Pigeon one short uh, speech that he made. I'll be doing Laurel Austin next. Uh, hers is a little bit easier to edit and upload. Uh, then I'll probably do Yana's after that. Hers will be a little bit easier to upload as well, the editing, because it's going to take me a full day, about 8 to 10 hours to edit in the debate itself because of editing in all these extra... Uh, 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 the, the, the PowerPoints that both men were using, I have to upload those as well. So it's going to be a lot of work and very timely. Two cameras that were running on the event as well. So just please bear with me. i really got to find a full day to work on that. And that is tough to do as well. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom and Erev Tov.